Oh, hi everyone. Welcome back to She Burst Podcast. Today's guest is Lori Schoenfeld. Hi, Lori. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to my podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Brooke. I'm excited to be here with you. Um, so Lori is the host of the Enlightenment Podcast and the author of her debut novel, novel, Little Owl. <laughs> so when did you first realize you wanted to be an author? I have wanted to be an author from the time I was eight years old, right along with seven other occupations. I couldn't decide because I liked all of them, but author was definitely on my list of eight. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's how mine was. Like, I wanted to be um, a train. I don't know if it's a train engineer. You know, the ones that build the trains. Like, I don't want to be a conductor. I wanted to build the train. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I definitely I was on the same route as you. <laughs> so, so what inspired your debut novel, Little Owl? Yes, uh, Little Owl is. It took me eleven years to write Little Owl, and it is honestly a blend of all of my fears and all of the different things that I personally was experiencing but didn't understand and kind of wove them into different characters to understand what was going on within my world, but view it in a way from a character's eyes, which felt a little safer. Um, the main theme of what brought up Little Owl is um, it's about a lady, Adeline Rushner. She's the main character. She's an unstable mother. Um, who's trying to create safety and consistency within her home and family, but she doesn't know how to quite do that. as She's spiraling um, on her own from her own PTSD and childhood trauma. And so as she is trying to figure that out, she, her daughters go missing. Um, they are taken right from her front yard, which is a big part of my own worst fear. Um, as most parents, that's one of their big fears of their children being taken right from underneath them. Um, but her daughters are taken right from her front yard and presumed dead. And she cannot face that that's her reality. Um, that cannot be her reality. And so this sets her off on a mission to figure out what happened to her daughters. And then that also walks her through some of the questions within her own PTSD and childhood trauma to figure out the lies that she's told herself and the lies that those around her have told her as well. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. How did you come up with the character, Adelon Rushner? Like, go ahead. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> if you were still talking. Um, Adeline, <laughs> I honestly don't really know. She just kind of came in, like when I first had the fear um, that my daughters were missing because I actually had a moment where I had a panic attack and a real life feeling that they were gone and they weren't gone. They were fine. But that feeling stuck with me for weeks after um, where I was like a mother copter. I was always checking in on my kids because that feeling was very real within my experience of someone's going to take my kids. And when I started, I started writing a little bit about what I was feeling and what was going on within that experience, not planning to write a novel at all. But Adeline somehow in the process came in of, let's ask these questions. What would you do if your daughters went missing? And this whole character came to life where I began writing out what Adeline's journey was of what she would do, but also implementing some of my own fears within her character as we went through the journey to figure out what would we do? What kind of actions would you take if your kids go missing? How far would you go for the ones that you love? Really asking those deep questions that we oftentimes don't like to face or think about but that's the journey that Adeline began to take, and I took a, right alongside with her writing the novel. Wow. You know, reading your plot, it just reminded me, like, before when I was in my mid-20s and I was, like, uh, watching Deadly Women and all these other crime shows, and I'm like, I'm scared to have kids because of that reason, the reason that you just mm -hmm. mentioned. Like, what if they're kidnapped? What if they're, like, taken right from me in front of me? You know? Like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
So uh, can you give our listeners like a brief summary of your novel? I know you gave us a little bit of, of it in the beginning, but can you go like a little bit more? But don't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, this is a multiple POV story. So we have Adeline Rushner is the main character as well as her husband, Cash. There are five other characters within the story that are all pieces from her past and also her present that connect to either her and her journey through the PTSD and childhood trauma or through her missing daughter. Um, There is one character, Officer Abbott, who starts investigating um, the whole question of what happened to her daughters and finds out that there's an owl necklace that's left um, at the Rushner's home that resembles the same exact token that was left when his daughter was kidnapped a year prior. And so we get to kind of weave in with each one of these characters, a lot of their own fears, a lot of their addictions, a lot of the things that are holding them back that they're doing to themselves and weaving their stories, trying to figure out how they all connect to the Rushner girls. To check that book out. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you working on any new novels? I know that this novel just came out, but are you working on anything else or any ideas? <laughs> yes, I have uh, two stories I'm currently working on right now. One I wrote last year and I'm in the editing process. Okay. The title right now is called Sun is My Virus. Um, and I'm working on a brand new novel called Voiceless about a girl who her whole dream is to go on Broadway. Um, But when she loses her voice permanently, she's faced with, do I let go of my dreams for good? Or do I find a way to still be on the stage and just adapt with this new situation? So, (laughs) yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's amazing. Wow, those are, wow. (laughs) So are you like um, ever gonna write any series? Like, are they gonna become series or are they just gonna be standalone books? That's a really great question, Brooke. Mm -hmm. Um, I left Little Owl open for the possibility of a series and it really depended on how how much the audience connected with Adeline and the book. I've already had multiple people ask me, please tell me that you're writing a second book. So (laughs) we're we're writing the series. Nice. <laughs> two and three in this series, yeah. Wow, nice. <laughs> so um, these are questions about your podcast because you have a podcast as well called the Enlightenment Podcast. So what inspired you to start that? Hmm. I love that <laughs> question. <laughs> I, you know, growing up um, with PTSD and trauma, I had a really hard time feeling comfortable sharing my voice. It took a really long time for me to feel like it was okay for me to share my experiences, my story and my voice. There were just a lot of pieces that I allowed to trap me in staying quiet. Mm -hmm. And the more I started speaking up about my experiences and sharing my story with others, the more I realized every one of us have a very powerful story to share We just also have those layers as well of not feeling like we should share our story or not thinking our story or voice is valuable or enough or that people will listen. Mm -hmm. And the Enlightenment podcast was really a place to help support artists, business owners, foundations, people that have a story and a voice as we all have one, Mm -hmm. but be able to share their story in a space that's safe and supported to help them be able to get off the ground and be heard and understood as every one of us need at least that first stepping stone to get us off the ground and hear our voice, but have other people hear our voice as well so that we can get those connections too. And so that's really what stemmed into why I wanted to create the Enlightenment podcast. Wow, that's similar to why I started mine. Like, um, (laughs) like, at first I was afraid to tell my story because I was like, people are going to talk about me. You know, they're going to talk about me. They're going to make fun of me. If they don't like me, they're going to say stuff about me. And Mm. as I get older, I realize people are going to talk about you regardless. They're going to talk about you the rest of your life. 
So mm -hmm. why not just share your story and um, inspire others and help others? Like, I'm going to tell my story, whether people like it or not, and that whether they talk about me or not, I'm definitely going to do it. Yeah, <laughs> <truck. High five. laughs> oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. I realized, like, just do, do what you want to do. <laughs> so um, you already told me, like, the type of uh, guests you have on your podcast. Can you go into depth about that? Like, do they tell stories of their past or PTSD or anything like that? Yes. Um, on the Enlightenment podcast, we talk about the pieces in our lives that were the struggles and parts in our lives that were things that have been hard for us, but also the things that we're learning and growing and succeeding in as well, as life is really just a beautiful blend of both. You know, you can't learn and you can't grow and stretch until you fell and you struggle and you see what's not working so that you can try again to, to make those choices to find a space that is going to work that is going to be successful and so um i think it's really important to talk about both areas no matter where you are in your life whether you feel like you're successful or you feel like you're just starting or wherever that looks like for people mm -hmm. having a voice to share both those parts of this is what's going on that's really good in my life but this is what's really hard or this is where i completely failed but this is where I feel like I'm succeeding and I'm happy, or this is where I feel joyful, but then there's other areas of my life where I'm disappointed or I'm hurting or I'm in pain. Um, so the enlightenment podcast is a place where you share both those pieces and whatever feels comfortable for the guests to share with what they're walking through, whether it's physically, mentally, or emotionally, as we all have different things that we're struggling with at any given moment. So that's true. What do you enjoy most about hosting your podcast? <laughs> I love talking to people. Um, I really love connecting to all diverse, different personalities. And I learn something amazing from every single person that's on the show. And so I feel like even if there's maybe one or two people that are listening that really grasp the message that's more than enough and I always walk away feeling like a better human connecting and hearing and empathizing and trying to understand what someone else has gone through as it helps me to really just gain more gratitude for the human experience even if I've never personally been through that um, experience myself I'm able to see and understand it in a different way than what I did before we had that conversation so I love that yeah, definitely. And like connecting with your your um guests and stuff and they like I just love when people open up and tell me their stories. <laughs> like I feel like it can inspire especially young adults and teens who yeah. are struggling right now. So I definitely agree with you there. Um I wanna thank you so much, Lori, for coming on my podcast today. <laughs> thank you so much for having me, Brooke. <laughs> you have a great day. You too. Bye. <laughs> hey, everyone. I want to thank you all so much for supporting my podcast and for listening to my podcast. Today's guest was Lori Schoenfeld, and she is also a podcast host. She hosts the Enlightenment Podcast, and she has very intelligent, um, talented, inspiring people on her podcast. So if you want to check it out, go ahead and check it out. It's uh, a great podcast. Um, also, she wrote the book Little Owl, and it sounds very, very good. So I'm going to definitely check that out. Um, if you want to find her, you can go to the link I posted on this um, live stream, and it has her website on there, and it has other details on there. And you could also stream this podcast anywhere. So it's on all podcast platforms. And I want to thank you all so much for listening and so much for supporting our podcast. Have a great day. Make great choices.